1370 WOCA. We're going to go from music to the law. <laughs> John Fuller is in the studio, ready to take your yeah. questions. He's an attorney, of course, at the law firm of Fuller and Fuller. The other Fuller is Janet, his beautiful wife. She's also a registered nurse. Uh, and so she's got something to fall back on, just in case that law thing doesn't work <laughs> out, right? Uh, the phone number here right now is w- at WOCA. is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline, 622-WOCA, 622-9622. Good morning, John. Good morning, Larry. Good morning to our listeners. I hope uh, everyone had a nice, safe uh, Labor Day holiday. I, uh, it seems like today should be Tuesday instead of Wednesday, and we're all trying to do five days' worth of work in four, I suspect, but it was nice to uh, have a break if you were fortunate enough to be off on Labor Day. Yeah, right, right, right. All right, well, a question came up this morning. A landlord has a tenant who hasn't paid. And he can't afford to pay, I guess, the sheriff's office or something to have the person evicted. What the heck? I mean, uh, even a, a person can actually live in a rental pe- property uh, and not pay and just kind of live there forever? No, no. Uh, the, uh, the, the law provides uh, for eviction. And it actually has, I haven't done one of these in quite some time, so I don't profess to have all the answers off the top of my head. But if a if a tenant is delinquent and for failure to pay rent, you give him a three day notice, and if he doesn't pay the rent current within three days, then you go to the courthouse to the clerk's office and you file an action for eviction, and it has a provision in the statute that it will be advanced on the court calendar, so that it will be heard quickly. If the uh, tenant doesn't show up and have a valid defense, uh, you get a judgment. Uh, You then get what is called a writ of possession. Uh, You take the writ of possession and the final judgment. You deliver it to the sheriff's office. Uh, The sheriff has a, uh, a section or a division in it, and it will go to the house, apartment, or whatever, and will evict the ten- the non-paying tenant and will physically move them and their possessions to the edge of the property. Oh, really? Yes. Now, part of that I have a question about. The part where you go and uh, file the paperwork to get the whole thing going. Well, you have to file. You have to pay a filing fee okay, and is that, to the clerk's is office. That high? Is that a lot? Uh, I, I honestly don't, don't know. know the amount. I know that they have been raised all across the board. So just to file a regular civil suit now is... Three or four hundred dollars for the filing fee. Okay, well, that uh, and, and I, then, and yeah. I, th- that's an administrative part of the practice of law that I am blessed to have uh, people <laughs> in my office take care of, and, okay. I, and I'm not here to be able to tell you what the clerk charges. Uh, if you call the clerk's office uh, and ask them, they will tell you. They also have checklist forms that uh, for people who want to do it themselves, they can do it. Oh, really? Uh, but you then also have to pay the sheriff's department. Okay. For the service of process, both for the original petition for eviction, and then you wow. have to ser- pay them wow. to serve the writ of possession. Wow. So you really are stuck if you can't afford it. I mean, you, can, you can't do it yourself. You have to no. go... No, you can't. Once they're in possession, you have to have due process to evict them, and you don't want to go out there and quote unquote take the law in your own hands. Yeah, right. right. Uh, so that's the that's the procedure. The uh, the statute does provide that you are entitled, assuming the court rules that you are entitled to possession, that they fail to pay, uh, you prove your case in other words, uh, you're entitled to recover your fees and costs 
uh, but of course if you can't get rent out of them uh, getting your fees and costs is a little bit like getting blood out of a stone yeah 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 it's gonna be a hard one all right the phone line drop if you have a, a legal question that you'd like to ask John something uh, of your own or a family member or a friend and and I try to encourage you or discourage you really I'll, I'll do it the negative way the, the discourage you from bringing up like the president or politics and things like that. It really is for another show, not for the show. Well, that's true, and it's not that we don't enjoy sometimes those discussions. But what we really want to do is to try to help people who may have a legal issue, yeah. and if it's and if it's a, of a significant nature, we want to uh, try to help them either to come to our office if it's in the area of law in which we practice, which is civil trial personal injury, uh, business, commercial litigation, and social security disability, or complex family law matter involving substantial issues. Uh, if it's something we can help you with uh, and you hear about us on this show, we're very happy to, to set you an appointment. If, if it's something that's out of our area and we call, we're also very happy to try to help you get to the right lawyer. Find somebody. I want to yeah. make a, a point, though. We had an instance that happened yesterday. Uh, I was very pleased. One of our listeners called the office and, and had a problem. Uh, but the court hearing date was today. Oh. And we, oh. we were just, unfortunately, it is impossible yeah. uh, to, to respond to with that kind of short time frame. So I thought it, it was an important point to make on, to our listeners. Uh, if you're facing a legal challenge, if somebody has sued you, uh, uh, or if there's something that is happening that involves a court hearing, uh, don't wait until the day before the hearing to go try to hire a uh, lawyer because chances are the lawyer is going to have schedule conflicts uh, or even if he is available at that particular day and time, you have deprived him of the opportunity to get adequately prepared to do a good job for you. And, yeah, right, and, right. If, he, and if the lawyer isn't prepared... Uh, then, then he's not in a position to protect that individual's yeah. interest. Yeah, it's difficult. And and I have turned away cases because I simply did not have the time to get adequately prepared to uh, review the facts, interview witnesses, get out subpoenas, do legal research, file motions, pleadings, memoranda of law, and do all the things that you have to do. It's it's a practice of law is a far different discipline than than going in to see um, an emergency doctor or a doctor in a walk-in clinic because you've got a sore throat and the doctor walks in, takes five minutes, looks at your throat, does a, a strep swab, finds out you have strep throat, uh, writes out a quick prescription for an antibiotic, and he's in and out in five minutes, and that's all that has to be done, and that case is over with. Legal cases are totally different that's than the that. Same animal, yeah. How, what happens in the law? When and you hear this in the news, and I don't know how many cases locally that you've handled, maybe that had this. Where there's a, there's a criminal charge, and the person is acquitted. And then there's a family member who takes that person through the court again on a civil charge and wins, based on the same crime, almost like the O.J. thing happened. And, and I think... I well, we, have our, our, we have two areas of our judicial trial system. Uh, we have the civil side, which deals with individual grievances uh, between individuals or individuals and in businesses or corporations where there is a civil dispute. And then we have a criminal side where they are laws that the legislature has said if you violate this it is a crime. Those laws are enforced and prosecuted by the state attorneys throughout Florida who are elected constitutional officers. There are some cases that overlap where the conduct of the individual directed towards another individual can give rise to both a civil remedy and also be a criminal offense. And it is not double jeopardy because they are two separate, two separate causes of action. Huh. In other words, if, if a one party... Uh, assaults another person 
and hits that person and breaks their jaw. That is a civil tort. It is an intentional act that caused injury for which you can sue for civil assault and battery. And if it is an authorized touching, if it was not self-defense or anything like that, and someone just attacked another person and injured them, they have medical damages, lost wages, pain and suffering, mental anguish, all of the things that go into a negligence action. Uh Uh, They can sue and get a money judgment for the damages they've suffered. Our society also says it's not a very orderly society that allows people to go around beating up on other people. Yeah, right. Uh, So the fact that someone hit another person can lead to that person being arrested and charged with criminal assault and battery, which is a criminal offense, and if convicted, they can be sentenced and put in jail. You can't be put in jail in a civil case. All you can do is get a judgment for money damages, or you can get an injunction or some extraordinary remedies, which are called uh, writs, uh, where the court compels a person to do something, such as a mandatory injunction or a prohibitory injunction, uh, you know, various writs. I won't get into all of them. Uh, But uh, they, you know, you can have one act that causes uh, two separate things. And the standard of proof is very, very different. In a criminal case, as we've talked about, the prosecutor, the assistant state attorney or the state attorney, has to prove each element of the charge defense beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. The person who is allegedly injured and sues the alleged perpetrator who injured him, they only have to prove the elements of the cause of action by the greater weight or the preponderance of the evidence. Okay, okay. Okay? And so, that, is that what so I that, And that's the, that, the O.J. Simpson is, is everybody's classic example. Okay. He was charged with, with uh, killing his wife. He was acquitted. He was found not guilty. Our criminal justice system, nowhere in it will you find the word innocent. Because (laughs) determining innocence is not up to any earthly judge or jury. There is perhaps some higher being, depending yeah. upon how right. you, what your beliefs may be, that will ultimately determine innocence or guilt uh, of, of, of a heinous crime. But that's not for an earthly judge or jury. The only thing they can determine is whether the government of the state of Florida or the government of the United States, whichever entity and jurisdiction is prosecuting, whether or not they prove the elements beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt. If they fail to meet that burden, which our society, since, since the founding of our country, has said it is appropriate for the burden to be placed on the government to prove the offense, rather than a citizen having the burden to prove his innocence because it is essentially an impossibility to Hmm. prove a negative. I invite you to think about that and tell me, how would you prove a negative? If someone says you were driving your car 50 miles an hour, and you say, no, I was only going 35 miles an hour, how would you possibly prove that? In that particular case, I guess the only way would be is if you were somehow recording with a uh, like a recorder somehow and it, me- it measured it somehow it it, it 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 would be next to impossible yeah yeah the the other thing i wanted to ask you i don't know if it's really all that separate from it but uh, when the, you see these tv shows that are courtroom shows i often wonder if that actually does a disservice to the population in general because they never show attorneys with those people and I so as so a lot of people may get the impression well i could do it on my own they do it on tv all the time I, I I don't watch a lot of television other than uh, the sports uh, channel and sometimes the history channel and the military channel, so I'm not a very good uh, uh, bellwether to uh, gauge what's going on in, in television shows. I also would tell you that uh, 
in the event I did watch television, uh, just channel surfing, the last thing I would look at would be a legal-related re- <laughs> show. Uh, I remember many, many years ago, they had two very popular doctor shows. One was called Dr. Kildare, and the uh-huh. other was called Ben Casey, M.D., and I was in, just just absolutely infatuated with all of that. Uh, at that point in my my childhood thought I was going to go to medical school and be a doctor so I go in for my checkup with my family doctor and I said boy I bet you really enjoy Dr. Kildare and Ben Casey don't you you get to see all this stuff and you understand all the big words and he he looked at me and says I live this 18 hours a day the last thing I want to see when I go home is Hollywood's portrayal of, uh, of the practice of medicine. And I was about 12 years old, and I was, I was mystified by that, but I, I full well understand what he meant now. Ah, okay. So, the, but, so the, if I ask it another way, if, if, we're, if the public at large is seeing people in a courtroom without an attorney, half of them win, half of them don't win, I mean, does that, do you think, does that help does that cause a person when they're in trouble to say I don't need an attorney I can do it on my own well I, I again I, 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 I'm not sure which kind of shows you're talking about but remember we have a what what people call small claims court it's, it's technical correct name is summary claims and it is designed for people specifically to go there without attorneys mm. because the amount in controversy is relatively small it's under five thousand dollars and you have forms you have clerks to assist you and you get to go there and both of you both sides represent themselves uh... you also have a right to a lawyer if you go there but the rules are more relaxed they are not as rigidly applied there is greater latitude so that there are less technical pitfalls and it's designed to give people a forum so they can have their disputes resolved by a judge if they can't settle it at mediation and without having to pay a lawyer because it's not cost efficient to hire a lawyer to dispute a relatively small amount of money but it gives a person a forum to get a a judgment for what they are entitled to if they prove the elements of their claim. That's kind of what some of these TV shows are based upon, where you have a, a plaintiff and a defendant standing there, and they yeah. each uh, tell their story. They have some receipts or photographs or whatever. And, and that happens every day in the Marion County Courthouse in, in the uh, Summary Claims Court. And so, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I think as you get into more complex area, a more complicated area, anyone would tell you that you need a trained professional. Uh, it's simply too complex uh, for a layperson to be able to adequately protect themselves. The phone number here is 622-WOCA. That is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline. Did I explain to you why we say it that way now? Uh, yes, you did yes, a few weeks ago. They're, they're sponsored, the, so, the uh, uh, air conditioner people, climate control. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. When when was it determined or started to have twelve people on a jury, and, and, and what's the story behind that? And has it always been twelve? That's a great question, and I'm not sure I have all of the facts and details. Uh, it started as twelve originally out of the Constitution because uh, it, it 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 was a first of all. You couldn't serve on a jury unless you were a property owner, uh, which basically eliminated women. Uh, you, you couldn't serve oh, really? on a jury unless you were a registered voter, and there was a period of time that women didn't have the right to vote. Uh, and so it, it, it started out uh, as a 12-man jury. Yeah. Uh, later on, as we as our population grew, as courts got busier and bigger, uh, it was determined that six-person juries were uh, perfectly adequate, more cost-efficient, and so for everything except capital cases, which are cases in which the death penalty could be imposed, okay. uh, or cases involving eminent domain, which okay. is an action where the government is taking a private citizen's right. property, 
when he doesn't want to sell it, but there is a compelling public need for a road, a bridge, right. what have you, and the government has the right to take that, but the person is assured that they will have just compensation, and that just compensation will be determined by a 12-person juror. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, like over in Europe, with all the different countries, their juries are, are that is that all standardized, uh, like eight or twelve or whatever, or has every country got a different kind of a deal going? I I am not able to answer that about yeah. other the judicial system of other countries in the world. How Sorry. about Canada? Uh, again, I, I'm no expert on Canadian yeah. law, but. Uh, Canada is still uh, uh, closely related to the crown, and yeah. of course, our judicial system comes from the British common law, so exactly. there is great similarity. Uh, but the Canadian system is different; they have different courts. Yeah. They have they have barristers and solicitors. Okay. Solicitors are are office lawyers who do the paperwork, wills, estates, probates. Oftentimes, he will work up a criminal case or work up a civil trial, but he doesn't go to the court and argue it. Only a barrister uh, oh. is allowed to do that. They have barristers, solicitors, proctors in the law in the court of admiralty. Yeah. Uh, they have different stuff, and they also still wear uh, horsehair wigs uh, really? when yeah. they uh, when they appear in court and um, and argue uh, a court uh, a case in court. I have seen cases tried. Yeah. In, in England and in Canada, okay. and it's a it's a very uh, it's a very refined, very genteel, yeah. usually usually, yeah. uh, very orderly process uh, of which our system evolved, and we've adopted many of their right. uh, of their ways, but it, it is not identical. Um, I don't have the ability to give you all the nuances because yeah, I've yeah. obviously never practiced in a foreign country. Right. I, I believe they don't have the death penalty in Canada. That could be. I I, I am yeah. not uh, familiar. I know some some countries have uh, have completely done away with the death penalty. Right. I know different countries have widely differing laws, uh, just as uh, we have differing laws in our sovereign states. You know, yeah, we have yeah. federal laws, but each of the sovereign states and areas that are unique to, to the state yeah. uh, have reserved in them, and it's guaranteed to them by the Tenth Amendment to yeah. our Constitution yeah. that uh, any law res specifically reserved to the federal government shall belong to the people of the individual sovereign states. Yeah, I, I know for years France had the guillotine, but I don't think they practice that anymore. <laughs> it's a terrible thought, but... <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, uh, I I think we've, you know, probably moved beyond that stage in yeah. most, most civilized countries. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously uh, there, there are laws in the Middle Eastern countries that are, you know, oh, yeah. uh, people losing a hand oh, and yeah. flaw and a lot of different stuff. I have no no knowledge of it, and obviously that's way beyond the scope of, of what I could help you with. All right, thank you, Hugh. Let me go to the next phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with John Fuller. Hey, good, mo good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, I just w I just want to know if it is a law about um. <coughs> But let's say if somebody is out there, um, let's say, <clears throat> like me, for instance, um, to be like um, <clears throat> like what you are now. I'm very sorry. And, uh, I'm having a hard time understanding you. I don't know whether we just have a bad connection or not, but... Uh, I, I couldn't quite understand your question, sir. All right, all right. We'll have to let that one go. Uh, if somebody wanted to call you at your office, where they would yes, be able to speak uh, longer. I, our office number is 352-547-4292. Our 800 number, toll free, is 855-534-2565. We do have offices both in Ocala and the villages, so... If you have a, a, an accident case or some civil type dispute or a, a complex family law matter or social security disability case and you live in the village area and you don't want to travel to Ocala, uh, we'll be happy to see you and help you in our village office.
Okay. Uh, always good to see you, John. I, you know, this, I know through the course of the show, I always get these I, these questions that come up, and then I look at the clock and we're out of time. It's always a pleasure, Larry. Just Thank have, you. Just have to move forward. But we learn a little bit each week, don't we? It's a lot of fun. I, I learn and enjoy talking about the law, and I appreciate our listeners very, very much, and uh, hope if, if, if they have legal problems and we can help them, they'll call us at the office. That's, that's the idea here. Uh, John Fuller, thank you. Say hello to Janet. And I will. We'll see you next week. Thank you. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back with Dr. Riyad Fakori. Thank you. You're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370, Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Hi, this is Jody Saulnier. Jeff and I are the owners of J&J Jewelers in the Jasmine Plaza, which is located at the intersection of State Road 200 and Airport Road. With third-generation jewelers, voted Ocala's favorite jewelry store for the last five years. We carry a wide selection of new and estate jewelry, bridal sets, and citizen watches. J&J Jewelers specialize in jewelry repair and customer.